Dr. Sophie Messager, and this is the Wisdom Messenger podcast. In this show, I interview pioneers in women's health and personal development about groundbreaking concepts that help women reclaim lost knowledge and restore inner wisdom. By bridging insights from ancient traditions and modern research, we question stale cultural narratives and midwife a new paradigm around birth, life transitions, and women's autonomy. Join me as we delve into stories and studies that empower women to reconnect with their inner voice and live their truth. Tune in as we rediscover what it means to fully trust ourselves and shape our collective future. In this episode, I interview Jane Hardwick Collins. Jane is a grandmother, former home birth midwife for 30 years, a teacher, writer and menstrual educator, and the founder of the School of Shamanic Womancraft. Join us as we discuss how drumming can support the birth journey. Highlights include how making a drum can provide the medicine a woman needs through pregnancy and birth, Jane's own birth story and how drumming helps her experience an ecstatic birth, how drumming can help us communicate with our babies and alleviate pain during birth, and help us get knowledge from our future babies to change the world today. So welcome to my show. Uh, today I'm delighted to welcome Jane Hardwick Collins, um, who was a midwife, a grandmother, and the founder of the School of Shamanic Woman Craft. In a minute, I'll ask Jane to introduce herself in a bit more details than I am now, but I seek Jane out because I want to collect an, an information for a book on the usage of drumming during birth and women's life transition. And when I looked and God, does, God knows I looked a lot, um, the only person in the entire world I found online who had written anything of substance on the subject, apart from um, Lynn Redmond with uh, Women Wear Drummer book, was Jane. And I found a blog and I reached out to Jane and so I'm delighted that um, Jane agreed to come and talk to me about this really important subject. So thank you very much, Jane. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more? Thank you, Sophie. So first, just thank you very much for the invitation. And I'm really thrilled to be able to talk about this subject that is dear to both of our hearts. And um, further introduction, well, I'm postmenopausal grandma. So I like to introduce myself with the most important thing first post-menopausal grandma <laughs> and I was a home birth midwife for 30 years and I then created the School of Shamanic Woman Craft which is an international women's mystery school and that, that continues on and now I travel around the place doing workshops and I have all kinds of things available. Excellent, thank you. So tell me straight into the most important, exciting topic we're covering today, Jen. Tell me, how did drumming come into your life? You know, what attracted you to it? How did it came to be for you? Well, I first met drumming, like uh, from a frame drum, a shamanic drum, say, not that it's a shamanic drum, a sh the shamanic processes that drums can take us on when I was about 32, 33. So that's that's a long time ago. I'm 65 now, so a few decades ago. And my first introduction was uh, meeting a teacher, a shamanic teacher, and learning how to do drum journeys. So journeys to the drum and those the sh into the shamanic realms. And I really learned about earth-based spirituality through that process as well so it was not just the drum that I was introduced to there but just the whole practice of connecting to the earth the seasons the moon the, the each other the circle way it was like a beginning of a whole new way of being and and thinking and knowing for me I, I hadn't had a very spiritual upbringing so I was hungry for something and the drum was actually my way in mm, wonderful mm. and from that how did it came to be that you started using it in the context of pregnancy births and yeah. you know, the whole birth journey 
Well, once I learned about drum journeys, which basically, as I describe them to people, it's a bit like a self-guided journey to the beat of a drum. And it's a bit like a dream, mm. but you're awake. And so anything goes. So once I learned about that, I started offering it to my home birth clients. So my clients that were coming to me for midwifery services for the purpose of meeting their baby in their womb. And that was like a magnificent experience to be able to offer them. And, you know, everybody took it up and it just enhanced their relationship with their baby and opened a form of communication that they then didn't necessarily need the drum for. So it was mm. like a a way into a place that they had access all the time. And then I, I actually had the experience of um, being drummed for when I was in labor and birthing my third baby. And so that was how I used drumming in my midwifery practice. And then after I, after I had the drumming in my labor, I then offered that to my home birth clients as well. But the other side of all of this as well was that I began making drums. And that was a wonderful process. And, and what I used as the initial... Uh, process with the School of Shamanic Womancraft Four Seasons Journey, which is the year-long program that um, is still available, 14 years on from when I started it. And we everybody makes a drum at the beginning of that mm. as, the, as our first process. And we make the drum as a ceremony and it is results in a shamanic tool for the women to then use in the practices that they do. And a beautiful process where they get to revisit and relive their own birth experience, like how they were born at the time they're making the drum. So they're birthing a drum and they're experiencing the imprint they have in their body and their psyche of their own birth. So it's, it's a huge process and an opportunity to connect with your birth imprint and also see how to work with it rather than be worked by it. Yeah. And then the other beautiful thing that happens in that process, that ceremony, is that the the baby, the drum, represents the medicine of whatever animal hide is used for the creation of the drum and whatever wood is used in mm. the frame. And then also whatever arose for the woman making the drum at the time. So if she... Um, experienced vulnerability for example then the drum has that aspect of healing built into it made into it so that whatever the woman healed in the process of making the drum is also available for whomever she plays the drum for so it's like a lot of magic in it which is really awesome so so there's so many things you you mentioned i want to backtrack <laughs> before we get into because i was like as soon as you started talking about using it in pregnancy um to help women connect with their babies you know more, more to explore that a bit more with you and, and several of the aspects of what you've mentioned um it came to me when I started using it for that very purpose, you know, started um, interviewing women for the purpose of the, the book and the course I'm doing around this. Mm -hmm. That that's something that came a lot, you know, and, and then that's when I was thinking about that, I thought, how did we get to a society where we think the only way to communicate with our babies is through a machine mm. in a technological place, you know? Yeah. And so tell me a bit more about, I'd love to hear a, what you heard women say, you know, were they surprised when you started mm. offering that to them? What, what did they share? You know, one or two stories of, of maybe something mm. that sticks into your mind, or the, yeah, a general I've thing that came. Yeah. Okay. So the connection really is the big thing so that they can actually start a conversation with mm. the baby and I offer these drum journeys in so we have they have to go into their womb and 
I offer this in my shamanic dimensions of pregnancy workshop that I do all the time. And I have little e-courses with these as well. And I've got all these drum journeys on Spotify and mm. Apple music and that. So they're available to everybody to use as well as instructions that are specific to this process. But the thing that happens, I guess, mostly is that the women can, that well, you have to start on the outside of your body and they take all their awareness to the outside of their vulva. So it's quite a process of engaging with the body mm -hmm. and then travel in through the vagina, checking out anything on the way. And if there's anything that needs healing or whatever. And then when they get to their cervix, so the opening to their womb, then I suggest that they make friends with their cervix and open a um, communication channel, so to speak, with their cervix so that they can have a conversation with their cervix during labor to best serve the process. So I say like, have a conversation with your cervix and ask her how she will communicate to you in labor to help her open. Mm. And I have heard some amazing stories about the results of that and and women getting specific instructions about what to do to soften and relax and then remembering that in labor and then that wow. making the big difference so good and then pop through the cervix and into the womb and so they're going in there with the idea of either meeting their baby because they're already pregnant or calling their soul baby so that would be the baby that they're wanting to conceive at some point or a spirit baby, which is one that they've lost, either from a abortion or um, a loss. And so different things in different conversations happen in each of those things. So, so for the baby that is already in the womb, you know, I suggest, well, ask them what their name is. Where do they want to be born? Who do they want there? <laughs> those sorts of things. But really, I just say, go and have a conversation with the baby and see what happens. And the stories that come from this are just so divine and range from my name is, and I want to be born at blah, 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 with so-and-so there to just being with the baby, you know, and, and the, the lovely connection and holding kind of feeling. And I, I used to invite women to draw pictures of what they saw and there was, you know, amazing things that they then have this picture that like, you know, nowadays people have the ultrasound picture, but they can also draw the picture of what they saw or felt when they were doing these journeys. So when when women con connect with their soul baby, the one they're inviting or calling, often they get like answers to the question of what do I need to prepare for you? And yeah. it's always like the exactly the right thing. Like, mm. oh, no wonder they said that or whatever. Yeah. And then with the babies that they've lost, then that can be a really healing thing, you know, like saying sorry or saying mm. see you another time or whatever it is that's specific to the individual story. So that's really the uh, way that um, the some of the stories. And I'm just thinking like absolutely like names and people questioning whether where they should have. Should I have the baby at home? Should I have the baby in the hospital? And getting clarity through the process so it's often the tool for clarity so clarity mm -hmm. and connection yes. and also um i also suggest that it's a lovely thing to do with the partner so the father or whoever the partner is to lie down together and either listen to recorded drum beat or someone drumming obviously live is great but recorded is fine it still works because it's working on your brain. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, so the I just want to share work. one little tidbit here because my husband doesn't believe in, I've been drumming for 10 years and I'd been recorded myself for, for a journey to share to people. And I was replaying it on the computer and he was sitting in, in this office and he was like, can you stop that thing? It's making my brain go funny. <laughs> and that was a recording. And he, did, he did, doesn't believe in it. <laughs> yeah okay but it was making his brain go funny well there you go there's the evidence yeah yeah so um the idea of meeting the baby with your partner and yeah. one of the rules or whatever with drum journeys is that 
to not touch each other, not touch people because you might go on the same journey with yeah. them. But to do that on purpose, so with the mum and the dad or, you know, the partner, to lie beside each other so that you actually are touching each other and going off on your individual journeys, but to meet the baby. Mm. And that is such a powerful, beautiful thing. And I did that with um, my last baby and my husband, Paul. And I will never forget the experience that I had with that. It was just so special. And, and I didn't know, you know, that I was pregnant. So I was, I was imagining who the person was, but who the person is, is who I saw in that journey. And it was like incredible. I couldn't have, I couldn't have made it up mm. to be more perfect as a representation of, of him and where he had come from. And yeah, so it was really great. So what that actually gave me was a, um, an understanding of who was coming. Yeah. So that was beautiful. So and did your husband have similar visions? Different, but yeah. you know, yeah, not, not the same. No, different. Yeah. But I think that doesn't matter. That's, you know, it's, it's whatever yeah. the message is for the individual. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So tell me a bit more about how do you, so moving on from pregnancy, maybe we can cover a bit more of the pregnancy because we've covered the communication, but if you look at the whole birth journey, what do you feel that the drumming does that is mm. so useful and powerful? Um, we can go more into the labor in details into, but if you, the overarching thing, I know you've already mentioned how it helps with, uh, you know, what people need to learn and I think, but if you look at mm. the sort of the drum in its whole, what do you feel it's particularly helpful? Well, I think that one of the things that it's really helpful in understanding is the brainwave state that's best suited for birthing, for labor and birthing. So I, I, use, I use a process in my pregnancy, the Shamanic Dimensions of Pregnancy Workshop, where we do some craft mm. and we make what's, you know, woven things that are called God's eyes or goddess eyes. Yeah. And in the process of weaving them, everybody relives their own birth imprint mm. again. I can't start or I'm stuck or I need help or whatever. So it's, it's useful for that process and also useful for as an exercise for people to understand what certain brainwave states feel like mm. and what that does to your body and the way you think. And so with the craft process, the, invitation is to be focused on what they're doing so single pointed focus which creates alpha brain waves and slows your brain wave uh, brain waves down and changes your state of consciousness which takes alpha brain waves which help you access theta brain waves and then even slower delta so in giving them a an experience of noticing what happens when they focus on one thing single pointed focus i then say now let's do a drum journey mm. and the idea is to use that single pointed focus on the drum beat and then what we know is when you focus on the drum beat a whole new thing happens to your brain like your husband it's making my brain go funny like yeah you know <laughs> and what's really cool is all the research is catching up on what um shamanic practitioners have known for like ever you know that, that there's cool like published research as backing that up now yeah yeah and i think one of the important things for us all to know is that every single one of us on the planet the origins of our, all of our cultures was shamanism mm. and one of the tools of the shaman was the drum and the drum was his horse or her horse and that you rode the drum to on on your journeys and you know we we you mentioned lane redman i bought her book out mm -hmm. for our conversation and i'm wearing her t-shirt oh wonderful <laughs> is that her t-shirt i didn't know well that. it was one of her brands yeah, oh, one wonderful. Of her t -shirts. it's got something on the back i might not be able to show that very easily but <laughs> her, yeah. oh excellent yeah. Mm. Well, so, if you, you know, oh, <laughs> ah, great, awesome, 
There yeah, aren't many dr- t-shirts about drumming and <laughs> things like that, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So I feel like the the awareness or having a prior experience before drumming of understanding single pointed focus. That's really help. helpful. Yeah. Because if people have never been there, um, what, what I found was that lead people who drummed on there for the first time, they do this thing where they drop in and out they, and then they're self doubting. Like they, they are, mm. they tell me stories like, well, I, I, I try to tell them you can't do it wrong. There's no right. Please don't compare other people's journey when they share thinking their sounds way cooler than mine because yours is going to be unique to you. And sometimes it's all sorts of weird and wonderful. But that that what you describe, um, you know, the, 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 that, that single focus and making I've made them in, in the UK. We often call them the eye of, the eye of Bridget. The goddess Bridget. Mm, yes, the goddess yes, 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 yes. So yeah. I've done workshops where I've made those. But when you were describing the process of, you know, you believe your birth, I made something. I just want to share this thing because it's such a wonderful process. A couple of years ago, with a friend who's from Colombia, she's a doula from Colombia, Nahila. She took us a group of women uh, online. We crocheted a placenta oh. to represent the the various planets that our soul had to travel through to get to the Earth and she talked us through it took many weeks and she talked us through there were different color thread for each different planet and how whichever problem you had with this particular thread meant this particular side of your character and then we all went wow. on the same day to bury it so i buried mine where i drum in the woods in the nature reserve near my house in cambridge and you know made a whole ceremony of reclaiming the fact that all of us women uh, most of women my age so I'm, I'm one stage down from you i'm i'm maga i'm 53 i'm still mm-hmm. so, i'm still bleeding so every time i think it's done it's not but we buried <laughs> this placenta to reclaim the fact that none of us have had that placenta as honored you know my, my generation and i'm mm. sure yours it probably mm. got put in the bin you know like mm. in, in clinical waste. yeah mm. Mm. toxic waste yeah very sad <laughs> So, so, but a clue, you know, anything to do with women or the feminine or birth or whatever that's put down or made fun of or feared or turned invisible is a clue that it holds great power. So, yeah. you know, the placenta is one of those things, you know, call it toxic waste, but yeah. it's nothing like that. Same for the yeah. drum. Totally. Same yeah. with the drum. Mm. I just think just want to do a tiny yeah. little bit side note for people yeah. listening who are not aware of that. If there's a, the, the, the book that Jane was referring to, Len Redmond's book, where when the women were drummer, explained that it used to be women who drum, not men, it used to be priestesses of the goddess. And then 5,000 years BC, patriarchy came along. And as you described, they saw this is power. So let's take it away. And mm. this process, you know, people often see in our culture drumming as some kind of pseudoscience, but actually, this, like I think it's really important that the science is catching up. Um, mm. There's a French woman who trained as a shaman with Mongolian shaman who created a, her name is Corinne Somwa. She created the Trans Science Research Institute, and they've got like 15 research projects ongoing. Oh, on wow. The effect of shamanic trance on the brain and psychiatric conditions and mm. healing mm. and all sorts of aspects. And I think the, the world we live in, it, we need that bridge. Um, mm, totally. Uh, we, need, we need that bridge for people to not dismiss it. And then they can have the experience. I'm sure you've probably done that yourself, Jen. You know, people are very skeptical and then you give them the drum journey. And there's once people have had the felt experience of how powerful it is for them, then there's no going back because they don't need mm. then somebody to tell them it is true or not true because they have a felt mm. experience. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But I love the science of all this kind of stuff. It's fascinating. And I really went looking for that after I had the most incredible experience of my life of the drum whilst I was birthing. Mm. Uh, shall I talk about that now? Yes, please. I was going to say, tell us more about the drum yeah. and birthing. So I had um, been working with the drum myself and, and in the way that I mentioned earlier with the drum journeys with my home birth clients. And then I ha- was having my third baby and my shamanic teacher actually came to the birth that he was a friend and his wife came to and she was a healer. And 
and he drummed during the labor. So he himself is a, is a musician. So he's got that whole nother level of mm. appreciation of sound and, and all of that. So, but I don't, that's not necessary, but that's was what he was also bringing to it, which I think more than anything is a confidence to in, in, in the, in the drum. Mm. So, um, Basically what happened was I was having my baby in the water in a pool and and what would happen was that so when the contraction would come and I would start to be making noise and whatever I was doing he would drum for me and he would he he actually altered the beat according to the energy of me mm. so when I was like screaming at one point then he was doing it even louder and faster so he was kind of uh replicating what he was experiencing as as the experience i was having mm. and basically <clears throat> what it did for me was that it helped me it was like something else where i i was accompanied by the drum yeah. so you know like we absolutely know we can have as many support people as we want and everybody doing whatever they do, but you still have to have the baby. <laughs> the mother has to give birth. So it can sometimes feel a bit like, who am I? Where am I? But the drum, the drum really gave me something to focus on. Mm. And then what happened was, now, I didn't know any of this stuff that I know now then. This was my big teaching. What happened was during the labor and, you know, retrospectively, I can realize I was in transition. And but I was in the pool and I was trying to it was hurting me so much. And I was trying to figure out how I could get out of it. Like I had enough. I was thinking yeah. maybe I can go to the hospital and get an epidural. So this is all going through my yeah, head. Yeah which is just so classic, right? At transition, women in hospital say, I want to go home. Yeah. Women at home say, I want to go to hospital. So yeah. I was going, <laughs> not everybody, but you know, it's the, it's the crisis of confidence point. Mm. So I was trying to figure out how I could not have a baby. Basically. I didn't want to, I I'd had, it was hurting me too much and I didn't want to do it anymore. Classic. And so I'm thinking, Oh, We'll go to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And I just knew in my head, if I said to my husband, Paul, and my two friends who are the midwives with me, I said, I can't handle this. I want to go to hospital and have an epidural. I knew what they would say. They would say, oh, but you're doing so well. Yeah. Or oh, maybe this is transition. So I had the conversation with them in my head, which made me realize I have to have this baby. Yeah. So then... Meanwhile, the drumming's happening. And what I learned later in trying to analyze what actually happened to me is that the drum beat in this fast kind of speed has an effect on the brain where it harmonizes the left and right hemispheres. And one of the results of that is that you know what to do next. Mm. So what I knew to do next without knowing that I knew to do next, if you know what I mean, was to take all my awareness to the part of my body that was hurting the most. So yeah. my cervix and then with accompanying the drum and this focus, what happened was the a portal opened up to an altered state of consciousness. And what actually appeared in my inner vision was mm -hmm. this big eye which I recognized instantly because I had met that I in a drum journey preparing for birth. Mm. And so to see it was like, oh my God, there's that, there's that I. And I just knew what to do next without knowing what I was doing or what to do. And I went through the eye, like, you know, I took my awareness through the eye. This is all happening in a split second, probably in between contractions, I imagine. I don't know. And I went through the eye and when I came through the eye to a, another place, an altered state of consciousness, and I felt zero pain, mm. like the pain was gone. And 
it was a little bit confusing because I couldn't tell who I was anymore. I, I didn't know if I was me or I was the baby. I thought I might be my womb. I thought I was the contraction and then I realized I was thinking too much and yeah. I should stop thinking or I would come bring myself out of it. Mm. But basically the the drum and the pain took me into an altered state of consciousness where and you know, I think it was probably it could have been 15 minutes or, or more. Mm. So I was clearly in transition when this happened. And in the journey, so, well, it, it was like a journey, right? So in that altered state of consciousness, I put my fingers up inside me and I felt a lot, tiny little bit of cervix left. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I think I actually left my fingers in there and with the next contraction, I Pushed held it. it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the baby started coming and I didn't push and it looked like, because there's photos of me, it looked like I was asleep. Mm. And I'd gone from screaming as, you know, in the way that women do, like making sound with, yeah. with the contraction as a, as a way of pain relief. It's a very yeah. effective pain relief is to use your voice because whatever's going on for your, cer yeah. your throat is going on for your cervix. So open ah, yeah. is opening. So um, the baby came down through my vagina. I had my fingers just inside and the head was coming down and, mm -hmm. And and it was in the water, so nobody could see any of this. So yeah. they all thought I was asleep. You know, there's that stage between um, the opening and before the pushing that's sometimes called the rest and be grateful yes. phase. Yes. <laughs> so I'm guessing they thought I was resting and everyone was grateful because I was quiet again. And and then, I did. Uh, I, as I said, I didn't push. The baby just came and... Then his, I didn't know it was a boy at the time, but his head came out and, you know, I had my hands there and I was feeling there was no cord around his neck or anything. And then the next contraction came and I, I lifted him out of the water. And as his body left my body, then I came back into like normal consciousness yeah. and he came out of the water and it was like, I think a bit of a shock for everybody because they didn't even realize that that was what was happening, but mm. it was amazing. So then like, I'd never even heard of that happening. So yeah. this is back in 19, early nineties, 1992. Mm. And um, water births were just starting to be a thing at that point yeah. as well, a couple of years before, but not much. And um, so that, that was an ecstatic birth. And ecstatic mm. doesn't mean feeling really good. Ecstatic means altered state of consciousness. Yeah. So I I then was so blown away by the whole thing and did a lot of research into what happens to brain waves in labor. Now, fortunately, there's not a lot of study on that, but there were some studies in Russia of um, women being, you know, with the E- EEG, yeah, cables yeah. on their heads in labor. During labor. And they, yeah. And mm -hmm. they're monitoring their brain waves. So I'm glad there's not a lot of research on it because I can't imagine how dreadful that experience would be. But what I learned was this whole idea that I mentioned that the drumming harmonizes the left and right hemispheres of your brain and results in you knowing what to do. Or, you know, basically that's about being in flow. And, and I couldn't yeah. help but wonder, you know, when I started looking into the whole why drumming, I think is helpful for birth. Um, it was that, you know, my gut feeling was that birth is an altered state of consciousness. And if supported the way that nature intended, you know, the supported in physiological health way, then can unfold but that in the modern maternity care of the, mm. the, the, world, the world we live in today then this is not allowed to happen so for me the drumming feels like a bridge back in to have yes. people you know in, into and and having drummed that burst myself women certainly shared um similar stories to what you've just described happened to you they talk about focus and the pain being mm -hmm. taken away one woman talks about ascending to meet her baby's soul and then the pain no longer being traumatic because then she was like aware that this is this mm. is the, the, because of 
a son and not some kind of outside person that's making it happen. Mm. Um, one client when who was wanting a home birth but decided to move in hospital in mid labor and it was the right thing for her. The, 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 something unfolded afterward that showed it was the right choice. Mm. But when we moved and I started drumming in the that's the first time I drum in an obstetric unit. I'd gone from home to birth center to obstetric unit and she was like said when she felt that we arrived in the hospital she felt she'd handed over our, our power to the system mm. and i started drumming and she said they felt like you gave it back to me oh wonderful. you know so like i didn't know because i didn't ask any of these women such detailed question until i started really looking into it a few months ago and i went mm. back and created a bunch of questions interviewed them and the stories they told me really blew my mind because they mm. all say the same thing and they don't know each other you know there's a real mm. for me it's like an antidote to there's another aspect that i'd be interested to hear what you think about for me it's also an antidote to the lack of sacred within the um, mm. modern maternity care environment do you have any yeah, yeah well yeah. i think what it does is supports physiological birth mm. and that's really what all of our efforts need to be around birth yeah. is to support the process not like birth works right birth is not something that's broken or needs any help it just needs us to not fiddle and mm. one of the ways we can do that is if the the woman is to support it is for her to feel and be undisturbed so that's the aim of the game right undisturbed birth now i always recommend to women if they're going to hospital to get an eye patch yeah because that's another thing any light going through your eyes activates your neocortex, which, you know, makes you think and whatnot. And you don't want to try and think ha how to have yeah. a baby. You don't need to. And if you start to try to think how to do it, then it just takes longer and hurts more. So eye patch to reduce light. And then earphones, mm -hmm. headphones, with a recorded drumming track on, on their phone or whatever. Yeah. And then no one's going to talk to them because they... <laughs> they won't be able to see and they won't be able to hear. And so that's like a little trick and a tool to, yeah. to be undisturbed. But obviously if there's somebody there doing the drumming, that's perfect. But, you know, a lot of hospitals wouldn't, wouldn't really allow that necessarily. So. When I, when I discuss that it. with some of my students in the course, I just ran, I, they say, how do we make that happen in them to be acceptable? I said, you write in the birth plan that is part of your religion. Yes, it's a well-known trick of um, birth practitioners that if mm -hmm. people don't give you permission, somehow if you pull the religion card, which is crazy, right, that you're having to lie for things. But there are religions that people don't understand that you know insist on certain things. And for some reason, I found when you start to say it's, it's because of my religion, doesn't usually get questioned. So years ago, I went to Dubai and doulas told me there, you know, that the trick that they use is the, they say, if they say to the obstetrician, oh, we want to discuss what you've uh, suggested, the obstetrician will say, well, well, no, I'm the doctor, I decide. But mm. they, they say, because it's a Muslim country, can we have 10 minutes to pray? Oh, of course. You know, mm. so yeah, I said to people, you can just say that. I've not personally ha had it refused. Um, I think people have asked me that, like in various countries, you know, how do you make it happen in a hospital? Which is, mm. you know, why bringing the science can be also helpful. But oh, one really. of my questions to you, Jane, is uh, if you're drumming live rather than recording, uh, but I get to a point even if you were like playing the recording out loud in a room, yeah. is that, um, that's also one of the reasons I think it can help beyond the, the, the birthing woman is, mm. It does affect everyone in the room, as my husband's totally. story straight. So I'm wondering, do you have any experience to share? The, what do you think it does to, for instance, if there is midwives present in a hospital room and they are really not into that kind of stuff, it will affect them, their consciousness, whether they want it or not, if somebody's mm. dropping in the room. Totally. And also it could be annoying like it was to your husband. So if, if, if they're... If they don't recognize it or understand it, it'd be a special person who would be able to just stay with it mm. in a situation where it's unusual. So, but I do have experience of it in a situation at a home birth when everybody wanted it to happen. 
And so I, so basically um, I wasn't the drummer. There was the woman, the mother's friend. We were all, all community members. So there was me and another midwife there and the friend support person was the one with the drum and she also is a musician. So that was lovely for her to use her craft in, in this kind of way. And what happened with that was that in the moment, in the, in the, you know, in the labor, the drumming was created a sacred space. It, it turned the whole thing into a ceremony because there wasn't any space for anybody to do anything or say anything stupid because there was, there was no, um, not stupid, like not aligned to what was going yeah. on. Like the, it brought the focus to what the focus is, was yeah. the baby coming, the mother birthing the baby. And that in and of itself was precious because it mm. was a container. So it created like a sound container mm. and, um, you know, we can use drumming also to cleanse spaces too, you know, like, so we might use smoke for, yeah. for that or whatever, but we can use the drum beat and go over the body. Yeah, because to... you can't exactly bring a bunch of sage in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oxygen from the wall and light fire. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can do that with the drumming. So the drumming yeah. will cleanse, so to speak, or purify the space. So that also was happening. And her children, her two older children were there and they were familiar with drumming. So it even calmed them down. Yeah. And, and then afterwards, like in debriefing with the mum, she shared about how when the drumming was happening and the difference between when the drum was happening with the contraction and when the contraction was happening without a drum, yeah. it really changed her perception and experience of the pain. So yeah. it was for pain relief as such. And like, you know, how that happens, it will be about affecting the brain, but also just the vibration, you know, using that yeah. gate theory of pain control that you sending through the drumming and the vibration that's that's coming to you. The idea is that you overload the brain with other information besides the contraction yeah. information and that lessens the pain. So I saw I saw that happen like really, really obviously with her. And it was just fantastic. Mm. And that drum went to some other births. It was called the birth drum. And yeah, it was it was really mm. lovely. And then my own experience again was was what I could share as, well, this is what happened for me. And then, you know, women have their own experience, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question that's a little bit like when I ask my people online, they were a bit not keen on the idea of the drumming at the moment when the baby emerges. What do you think that's appropriate, not appropriate? I know it depends on the context, but I'm just mm. curious to hear what you think of that. Mm. Well, I think that the first consideration would be to talk to the mother about the, that and say, do you want me to do that? Or do you not want me to do that? So get her permission ahead of time, like, you know, in terms of suggesting what all the things that could happen would be, like when you drum, we're like, do you want me to drum just when you've got a contraction or do you want mm. me to drum all the time? Do you want me to drum when the baby's coming out? And then obviously do whatever she wants. And then I think that if the baby is familiar with drumming and you, you know, would imagine that that would be if they'd done drum journeys before and the drumming was already happening in the labor, that that would be soothing for the baby as well and mm. would keep the, the container going of the, that the sound vibration is creating. And in terms of how I think it would affect the baby, um, well, presumably it would have the similar effects on the brain waves that, that um, it does on, on everybody else. Although, Babies and children spend most of their time in an alpha brainwave state anyway. So they're yeah. already in that. Yeah. So like um, maybe it would just facilitate that or maybe it would just be like a in the same way that babies, when they hear their mother and fathers or even the siblings voices, there's that familiarity thing that happens that it would just be, oh, I'm on the outside now, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want to suggest it as the only priority because the priority 
is the skin to skin and yeah the, totally i mean i felt yeah. the first i always remember the first verse i drummed that a home verse i only drummed during the pushing stage i just didn't feel um it was necessary beforehand she told me afterwards when you started it was so good i thought why didn't you do that before i said you didn't need it before but as soon as the baby is born i stopped if instinctively felt and also i would always be reassured that the women will let us know if it doesn't feel right because i had a client who hired me to drum at her bath drummed through the whole pregnancy she drummed herself she was a shamanic practitioner drums from the early labor established labor moved to the birth center drummed in there and then when she started to push and i could see she was struggling picked up my drum started and she went no I was like, mm. okay mm. it was really interesting so i think mm. we can trust that um the mother will can always change her mind and will always tell us and, and you know because i don't think we know she knows how she's going to feel until she's there and whether that's exactly yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. what and about think- the Sorry, sorry. Go I was on. just going to say that I, I feel like the most important thing after the baby's born is calm. Yeah. So if the drumming might be a bit stimulating, I don't know. But what the I found, will say. Yeah, what I found myself wondering, you see, is just, just the same way as I find modern maternity care fail to hold the sense of the sacred after the birth is something else as a doula i've been a doula i was a doula for 10 years it's something that really has always bothered me is how people fail to hold that space mm. and are busy doing busy doing busy wanting to get the mother out of the pool or get the placenta out or get the cord clamp get a hat on the baby all the sort of lack of reverence and i yeah i've always been like really agitated inside like i think i am having to be a guardian because i'm like watching like a hawk because I know that people are going to want to do this intervention. And if the parents have expressed that they won't want that, often they're too, um, you know, in this space of being amazed with a new baby to like register any of that's going on. Yeah. And I felt myself wondering a bit like that bubble you were talking about, if doing some gentle drumming during the golden hour, during the first hour after birth, not necessarily like at the moment of birth, but you know, once the baby's yeah. settled, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, and pe- you can start people getting into that state, like they want to go, we need to get yeah. this, to get that. To have some gentle drumming in the background might help keep that space in the space. Yeah, that's people. a great idea. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Really good. Mm. And it'll affect the, the practitioners there who are hustling. Exactly, you we'll know, calm it's them down. Yeah. less idle chatting and stuff, you mm, know. Mm. And I wondered what do do you have you ever heard what uh, have you ever used it during the postpartum the drumming? No, I haven't. But that's a would be a good idea and a way yeah. to calm because one of the things that happens with babies when they when they hear things that they've already heard, then that can be like a calming effect. Mm. So I think it would be amazing. I have certainly used it afterwards like long t- further on with more drum journeys and whatnot yeah. like if they needed to go back into the womb or or whatever but postpartum drumming would be a lovely thing i mean i have done it with babies around like for the babies that um who have been exposed to drumming on when they're on the inside through yeah. mum's drumming or doing the journeys or whatever and then when we're when they bring the, often that happens is they come back to circle and the baby's with them on the outside and and I and they're like the babies are just so calm with this very loud fast drumming and it's like they know it yeah I have a friend who has that drumming um throughout her first pregnancy then the second who says a toddler plays drum circle because I told us been to drum circle and I think it's wonderful. Yes, already. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And remember, you know, they're sitting in the womb or whatever they're doing in the womb. They've got a loud drum in their ears of the mother's yeah. heartbeat. So it's not an alien sound. It's a familiar one. Yeah. So mm. I wonder, Jane, what could you, could you share a bit um, more what you think the drum can bring to help the state of the current maternity care um, Mm. and potentially the state of the world, you know? Mm. Well, great question. And um, what I think it can do is what I've already said about it, holding 
the, the potential for physiological birth mm. so that the mother could be more undisturbed and therefore physiological birth would happen and also the connection with the baby and the information that the mother might get like I had one of my apprentices she was having a free birth and um, a wild pregnancy as it's called these days yeah and her antenatal care was drum journeys each week or whatever to connect with the baby and the baby was really instructional about what to do when and whatnot and she just dis she discovered through the process what the baby's animal ally power animal was which ended up being really helpful for her to understand the way the baby was born mm. was like bringing that same energy of the power animal which was amazing and then i feel like also we can use the journey opportunity that the drum gives us to to ask of the realms or in particular one thing i did recently was uh, invited everybody to do a drum journey that people who were interested in birth and helping birth to do a drum journey to meet the great great grandchildren to ask what they could do now to best facilitate the best facilitate birth in its most natural form so that it would be intact rather than dystopian yeah. by the time of the great great grandchildren and that was an amazing process. So many people got so much information, received missions. Like they had to become a doula or they needed to do what whatever it was. My my message, and I it's so the image is so clear in my mind. And I saw them and what should I do? And they said, just keep doing what you're doing, <laughs> which was a good answer for me, thinking I yeah. might have to do something more or less or different. So that that is um another way that we can find out what we need to do to change what is actually yeah. happening and therefore will continue to happen because like right now here in australia with the latest the latest uh, birth statistics 50 percent of women have a vaginal birth only 50 percent. you know there's yeah. a 38 percent cesarean rate one in three women are having their labors induced, one in three are having cesareans, and one in three, and it's not always the same one in three, yeah. but one in three women experience birth trauma. And so I feel like the more we can do to reduce the con the conditions that set up a likelihood of birth trauma happening and the drum would certainly be one of those mm. that, that then that's that's our job to yeah. do whatever we can to help babies be born gently and for mothers to be treated gently and with kindness and respect and using tools like the drum are going to introduce a different energy to the space where people are uh affected by the drum but also there's something going on here you know so as you said the, it brings the sacredness to the process and mm. if we could all just remember that birth is sacred then that would be probably one of the very best things that could happen mm. thank you and you know i've just finished listening to a book by a woman called lynn twist called the soul of money It's somebody who does like fundraising for the world hunger project and she shares something that gave me goosebumps she went to this tribe in the rainforest and they shared this prophecy that they've got of the condor and the eagle have you ever heard of that one no so the idea is that the eagle people are the one who are all about the intellect the mind and the technology and and the condor people are the one who are all about connection to the earth connection to the soul connection to what is and that their prophecies that the two got split Mm. and that there's their prophecies that the two the, this moment in time is the two are coming back together because mm. that's the only way humanity will survive mm. and i felt goosebumps when i heard that story and i felt that the drum especially now that we have you know something that makes it more palatable for westerners which is some scientific Science. evidence <laughs> behind it as opposed to just it being woo that it can um can act as a bridge to how people like for me it's all about connection reconnection to the self reconnection to the baby reconnection to each other i love that story you told about getting a couple to do a drum journey together mm. and yeah 
Mm. Any last, uh, we've got about, you know, just a few minutes left to our oh. um, chat together. Well, any last words, any kind of advice to people listening, you know? Um, well, I would just really say that it's recorded drumming works fine. So mm. don't think, oh, I can't do that because it'll disturb my sleeping child or yeah. I can't do that because I'm going into a hospital and there's women in the room next door that don't shy away from the recorded thing because it's it's actually about how it affects your brain mm. and and that's through the sound however it's coming and then but it, I think it, it's the actual live drumming that the vibration would contribute to the uh, pain relief concept yeah. so you know I think part of uh, birthing these days is about the mothers re taking back their power yeah. and and saying that you're going to be bringing a drummer into the birth would be a way to let the people there know that you know what you want mm. and what you need and you've brought it with you and thank you for the opportunity and you can learn something as well but I would say also that to figure all that out before, like obviously in a home birth, it's much easier. You're the boss in, yeah. a, in a, in an institution, they're going to have their rules. So you've got yeah. to figure out what they are before so that you don't get there and they say, Oh no, you can't do that here. So it'll be something that you need to prepare for and prepare them for. Mm. So I just think that drumming is, is something that can really calm our nervous system. And that's what we need in our world, right? Where everybody's just too stressed, so stressed to the max, activated and and disrailed, dysregulated nervous systems. And the drumming can help us to regulate our nervous systems and actually expand our consciousness so that we really get to understand just what we're actually capable of. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jane. So would you like to to share where people can find you um, online? I would share the links below wherever I end up sharing this recording, but um, would you like to just say a few words about, you know, where people can find you online? Okay, thank you. So I have a website, janehardwickcollings.com, and I've written lots of things. That I think there's an article up on there about drumming in labour. Is that maybe where you found it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I share my story and also about the drumming and the effects. So I have lots of other things on my website as well, including uh, e-courses that I offer that are, my focus is, is on birth as a midwife, but as a midwife, I learned that there was a lot more going on that, that um, affects how we give birth than mm. just the birth, right? So our relationship with our body and how we've, how we have been with our menstrual cycle and our menarche, our first period is like what's going to really affect how you give birth. So lots of things about that kind of thing and a lot of stuff about menopause. That's So my focus is on the rites of passage more now than just birth, so the whole thing. And, um, and then the School of Shamanic Womancraft is the Women's Mystery School that I founded. So that's got a website too, schoolofshamanicwomancraft.com. And you can see on there all the different things that are on offer there. And I'm actually coming over to England and Europe next year in 2024, where I'm going to be doing my one day workshops, of which the pregnancy one with the drumming is one of them. The other one's about menopause and the other one's about the wisdom of the cycles and the spiritual practice of menstruation. And I'll also be offering an eight day immersion into shamanic womancraft one in glastonbury and one in Brittany in france so that's all coming up next year and all that information will be on my website it's not all there yet but it's all coming lovely well thank you again jane i'm delighted we, you were able to join me discussing this groundbreaking um topic you know the, yeah um, well thank you sophie for picking this groundbreaking topic and subject up and really making it more accessible and available for people to mm. learn about and you know you it's like you're being the you're being the one the drummer out the front with with the information and i really thank you for doing that because the more people can find out about this the better <laughs>